What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites. Today we're going to have a look at which species of shark is the most dangerous to humans. And it's not this one. I know, shock horror, how can it possibly not be the great white shark? Surely this species has been responsible for the most bites on humans and the most fatalities. Well, if you were to look at the stats, yes it has. Now, don't get me wrong, statistics are really important and when they're used in the right way, they can be really, really helpful in informing decisions. Although statistics are just basically numbers, they lack important details about context and they can occasionally be twisted to suit an argument depending on which way you look at them. But when it comes down to which shark is the most dangerous or which I'm getting attacked by a fly. <laughs> Get out of there, man. This little fruit fly has gone mad. Right, let me try that again. So when it comes down to which shark is the most dangerous or which shark kills or bites the most humans, we can't just look at the stats because they can be a little bit misleading. That's something as well. The answer to all those different questions might be different shark species. For example, the one that bites the most could be one species of shark or the one that causes the most fatalities could be a different species of shark. Regardless, I'm gonna talk you through them all. So when we think of the most dangerous shark species, we tend to think of the big thing three. And that would be great white sharks, tiger sharks, and bull sharks. Looking at the data from the International Shark Attack file, that's ISAF for short, the numbers do back this up. As of the time when I recorded this video, the great white shark has been responsible for a total of 351 attacks on humans, 59 of which were fatal. The tiger shark comes next, then followed by the bull shark. I'm not sure whether this is including the 2022 numbers yet, so I would expect those numbers to change at some point. Also, slight side note, check out the sand tiger shark here, essentially in fourth place if you remove the unidentified Carcharina species with a total of 36 bites. What a grumpy little biter. So when we're thinking of the most dangerous shark species, there's a whole bunch of different factors we have to consider. For example, we've got to look at the size of the shark and how likely that shark is to be able to cause significant damage to a human. Then there's where that shark lives, where it feeds. Is it likely to encounter humans that often? Then we have to take into account the behavior of that shark species. Is it a particularly aggressive or bold species? Is it a generalist or a specialist feeder? There are so many of these factors that come into play. It can be quite difficult to pin it down to just one species. Realistically, any shark that's around six foot in length or longer has the capacity to cause significant damage to humans purely based on the power of that animal. If we bring it back to great white sharks, this species does fit the bill for a fair few of those factors. They can easily get to 15 feet in length and some individuals are even larger than that. So if you're bitten by a great white shark, even if it's just an exploratory or a territoriality bite, it's probably gonna cause catastrophic damage to your body. They also tend to inhabit areas where humans frequent. Surfers and swimmers in certain parts of the world every time they enter the water run the risk of being bitten by a great white shark. But by all accounts, I don't think the great white shark is the most bold or aggressive shark species out there. There's tons of footage from people like the Malibu artist or great white drone that show great white sharks completely ignoring surfers or swimmers and just going about their day. If white sharks were truly the most dangerous species of shark, then surely they'd be constantly attacking the people in these video clips. But they don't. White sharks are also a little bit more specialist in their diets, at least when you compare them to tiger sharks and bull sharks. Generally, they'll feed initially on bony fish when they're younger and then move towards marine mammals as they get older. So for me, I don't think I can put great whites down as the most dangerous shark species, even though statistically they might be responsible for the most attacks on humans. This isn't me giving you the all clear to go and jump in the water and splash around with great white sharks, by the way, guys. Please, God, don't do that. <laughs> Next, if we look at tiger sharks, these sharks also fit the bill. These guys are large shark species, inhabit areas where humans frequent, and differing from the white shark, they are super generalist in their feeding strategies. These stripy boys will pretty much eat anything. But again, they're lower down on that ISAF list by a considerable margin. They're responsible for way less bites on humans than white sharks, with a total of 142 attacks on humans compared to 351 for the white sharks. I think what's really interesting here though is if we compare the percentage of fatal attacks to the total attacks from that specific shark. Only 16% of white shark attacks resulted in a fatality compared to 27% for tiger sharks. To put it another way, based on the stats, you're more likely to die if you were bitten by a tiger shark than you would be if you were bitten by a great white shark. Sounds pretty strange, right? But we have to remember here, that's just basing it off the percentages and the numbers. 
every situation is entirely different. I think it probably plays into the fact that tiger sharks will pretty much eat anything. So if they've bitten you once, it's likely they're gonna bite you multiple times. And that means it's more likely to cause significant damage to your body. Moving on to the bull shark then, this is where it starts to get a little bit more spicy. Thinking about those factors then, it's a big powerful shark that's more than capable of causing damage. It's notorious for its boldness and aggression in nature with super high testosterone levels and a really high metabolism. It's also a generalist and opportunistic feeder feeding on a whole host of different prey items. And really importantly here, bull sharks inhabit multiple areas where humans are present, including some areas where white sharks and tiger sharks simply can't reach. Bull sharks can of course enter freshwater habitats like rivers or lakes, and this means their chances of encountering a human are even greater. If you compare that with the fact that rivers and lakes are generally a bit murkier where visibility is poorer, you're going to get bites in these locations. And then if you include on top of all of that, the fact that they can be quite aggressive, then you've got a pretty dangerous shark on your hands here. As a shark scientist, if you gave me the choice between jumping into an underwater seagrass meadow with a tiger shark or a lake with a bull shark, I'm choosing the tiger shark scenario every single time. Now there's one species of shark that hasn't been mentioned yet and it often doesn't come up in lists like this. If we go back to the ISAF table, there's a really, really important sentence here that reads, this list must be used with caution because attacks involving easily identified species such as white, tiger, sand tiger, hammerhead, and nurse sharks nearly always identify the attacking species, while cases involving difficult to identify species, such as the requiem sharks of the genus Carcharhinus, seldom correctly identify the attacker. Thus, the list is skewed to readily identified species. So the stats here have to be interpreted carefully because they are skewed towards sharks that are easily identifiable. Or they're also relying on whether there were any eyewitnesses who saw the shark and were able to identify it correctly. There is one shark in the Carcharhinus family that has likely been responsible for more bites and more deaths down the years than all of the big three combined. And that is, of course, our flappy fin friend, the oceanic white tip. On the ISAF table, it doesn't even make the top 10 for total attacks on humans sitting in a mere 15 total attacks. But down the years, this shark has likely been responsible for thousands of bites and deaths. Excluding the two World War II incidents with the Indianapolis and the Nova Scotia, think back to a time when explorers were mooching around the ocean in their wooden ships. How many of these ships went down in the open ocean without a trace? It's actually been estimated and they think there's around 3 million shipwrecks littered across the ocean floor. 3 million. And on those 3 million shipwrecks, the sailors who managed to survive the sinking entered the water and the first shark they likely encountered was the oceanic white tip. When we think of the factors that make a dangerous shark species, the oceanic white tip fits all of them. It's a large shark species, often over six foot in length. It's notoriously bold and aggressive and is a generalist feeder having to find prey in the vast expanse of nothingness that is the open ocean. Water leisure activities like surfing or swimming weren't as popular when you think back between the years of 1300 and 1800, say. So you probably weren't getting as many great white tiger or bull shark bites on humans. Okay, they probably still happen, but I'm not convinced they would have happened as much. Whereas when ships went down in the open ocean, you can bet the oceanic white tip came in to investigate and likely bit and killed a lot of people. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a cop out here and name two species that I think are the most dangerous to humans, both today and historically. For me, it's the bull shark and the oceanic white tip shark that top that list, even though they're not responsible for as many bites or kills based on the stats. Right, so it's all sounded pretty scary today, but I'd like to remind you all your chances of being bitten by a shark are incredibly low. If you don't enter rivers, lakes, and the ocean, it's zero. <laughs> Even if you did enter those areas though, it's still so, so low. And even if you got bitten by a shark, your chances of surviving that shark bite have vastly improved over the years. Say for example, you got bitten in the 1800s by a shark, your chances of surviving that probably would have been pretty low. But these days through advancements in medical treatments and emergency response times, you've got a pretty decent chance of surviving. And I think here it's also important to point out that the four sharks that we've discussed today are all in trouble, ranging from vulnerable to critically endangered on the IUCN red list. So while they might seem pretty scary, they all play a really important ecological role and they need our respect and help to save them. All right, there we go then guys. Those are my thoughts on which shark I think is the most dangerous, but I wanna hear what you all have to say. Which one do you think is the most dangerous shark? Is it one of those four? Is it not one of those four? Let me know in the comments. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like. It really, really helps out the channel every time you click that like button. And don't forget to subscribe to the Shark Bites channel below by clicking that big red subscribe button. Also turn that notifications bell on and that way you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Until then, see you next time.